Reef Bum is sponsored by Bulk Reef Supply and Ecotech Marine. Let's let's switch gears here a little bit and talk about trace elements. So I have, you know, historically never dosed trace elements to my reef tanks. You know, I've always relied on doing water changes. I, I typically do 10% weekly water changes. And, um, you know, so that my, my thinking in terms of doing that was that my trace elements were getting replenished via those water changes because you've got some traces <clears throat> in the salt mix that you're doing for the, uh, for the water changes. But you said something to me um, in one of our conversations a little while ago that made a lot of sense to me, and that's, you know, corals take traces in on a daily basis, so it would be optimal to be able to replenish those traces daily versus doing it one time per week with water changes. So, um, you know, and, and so about six weeks ago, I did start dosing your, uh, your traces, the Isolate 8 uh, MT minor and, and trace element solution for both of my systems. I, and I'm kind of doing a pre-post ICP analysis, and I've only um, got the pre-results at this point in time. But, um, but what I can say is that I am seeing some better coloration in certain corals at this point since I've been doing that. I think I've been doing it for about four weeks now. Can you talk more about um, why you think it is important to dose the traces to a reef tank and why it should be done on a daily basis? Well, you, you, if you're relying on, I'll, I'll, I'll answer this in two parts. If you're relying on your salt mix to provide your minor and trace elements, you better be sure that they're in there in the first place. And you kind of want to know which ones are there and they need to be there. They need to be there consistently. Otherwise, I mean, if, if you're, let's say that you're doing water changes to keep your strontium going, but the manufacturer doesn't put strontium into their salt. Well, clearly that's not going to, help you so you know you you need to know what's in there uh, to begin with and hopefully you can go ahead and get your hands on a an analysis an average analysis of, of their salt at the salinity that you plan on keeping it at the 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 role that a number of minor and trace elements play in uh, in aquatic ecosystems especially where it comes to uh, primary producers, plants, zooxanthellae being um, in, in that category of primary producers. Those minor trace elements are involved in so many critical biochemical reactions. They're, they're involved with photosynthesis. Uh, they're involved with um, the production of biopigments. And that can be down to not only impacting the intensity of the coloration, but the colors themselves that, that are actually expressed in the coral tissue. Uh, they're, they're, they're involved with, with enzyme production, uh, production of antioxidants. Um, and a number of them are necessary for the assimilation of uh, various types of inorganic nitrogen, basically the ones that are important in, uh, marine ecosystems. So ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, um, urea on some limited amount. And at the same time, they're also involved with the uh, the acquisition of uh, phosphate and sulfate. Where the really important elements are, which in my opinion are iron, manganese, and cobalt, those those to me are the ones that are that tend to be most biolimiting in, in marine and recirculating marine ecosystems. If you start dosing just those three elements, you typically see a couple of things happen: nitrate comes down a little bit by itself. You haven't done anything other than add minor and trace elements. And you don't just do this once. This is the kind of thing where you take a very small amount and you apply it uh, per the instructions. In the case of Isolate MT, it's incredibly concentrated. Uh, so a little goes a long, long way. And if you're dosing it on a daily basis, you're going to use very little of it relative to what you would probably need to do if you're dosing it weekly or even less frequently because you're keeping that concentration as flat as possible 
And so instead of the concentration of things attenuating all the time, you're keeping it more or less right. flat. With you doing a weekly water change, the concentrations of things spike up. And then if those elements are used by the, the uh, life in the system, they gradually drop back down until you do your next water change. It's not a very consistent environment. That doesn't lend itself, I think, to seeing very noticeable results. But if you add some of those minor trace elements on a, on a frequent basis, especially if you can just say, to begin with, for instance, I know I need 10 drops of this stuff over the next five days. That you can put into an auto top off. Right. And that is going to get you a much more consistent distribution of those elements into the system. And you're going to notice it relative to a once a week spike. 